Disclaimer, I'm a bit sick right now, so I might sound ass, womp womp. Let's be totally honest here. I did not think I would be doing YouTube still, if I'm being honest. Like, this was supposed to be some fun side thing that didn't go anywhere, so I was forced to go to college and pursue education, and even if that's still very much the case, I have grown a community who supports me and my content, and that's why I'm still here, live and kicking, so thank you all so much. And just because I'm still here, we are doing the Sani Anime Awards 2023. Yippee! <coughs> I'm dying. Also keep in mind that the shows are from fall 2022 up until summer 2023, so amazing shows like Free Run or The Apothecary Diaries will not be featured. Anyways, the best continuing series has some good runner-ups. One Piece is still here as always, and this time we actually got some big moments like Gear 5, and if we are totally honest with ourselves, One Piece will be here every year until the day it finally finishes, and even after that, the remake is gonna be here, so we're never gonna get rid of this germ. Demon Slayer is like my child at this point, because of how much money I have laundered out of it, or how much joy I have gotten out of it, but as a season, the Swordsmith arc is very mid. The cast was the most boring characters out of them all, the demons were whack and had no depth and there was no Inosuke. It can't get much worse. This is one of the only times any Twitter is right about anything. Demon Slayer Season 3 was carried by the animation and there is no denying it. When you don't even show the backstory of an upper rank, it's just over, man. Nezuko talking was cool though. Oh, hiya. That motherfucker just spoke, right? Yeah, I swear I ain't tripping. Wait, we can talk? Let's just be clear that this is not the second part of the final season, the final chapter, the final part, the final section, the final portion, the final segment, the final episode. This is the boring part. The part where Dick Rider number one finally died, Eren trampling children, and Honji thinking she was the main character. Yes, we got the freedom panel and some other stuff like Armin's negative risk, but other than that, it felt more like a filler piece. If this was the second part, we would have an argument, but with this one... I'm sorry, Eren Nob Gobblers. I'll give you some diapers and some tissue for your shits and tears, so go back to your Valorant D situation ship. For every kill you get, I'll give you an ooh. <laughs> Alright, bet. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Aw, oh, you're adorable. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> ooh. This is just a competition between Yusuke Kaisen and Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga Season 2 got very split opinions, and even if it was very much a farming simulator, it was a good farming simulator. When you think about character development, Thorfinn is one of the first characters you think of. A beautiful visual piece of fiction handling such different and deep subjects in an entertaining and thoughtful way. For example, how Homeboy had absolutely no game. Check the wrist, check the wrist. Please, please, give me your number! tried to save a chick who has a full-blown man just for the chance to get some of that Vicusi. That's crazy. I'm a bit dick riding JJK so much my ass gonna hurt, so let's just keep it short and simple for now. She's amazing, like what am I supposed to say? I also became pregnant during this scene, expecting in a couple of months. Alright, 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 boys and girls, we are cooking here. Oshinoko was ass after the first episode, and no one can tell me otherwise. The doctor became the most edgy, moody teenage boy with a sister complex, while the sister also wanted to be stabbed so bad that she was going to take a job from a random guy on the street. The redhead bitch was also so two-dimensional, I'm actually crying, and the rest of the cast was just irrelevant. Yes, the first episode was some of the best anime we have gotten in a very long time, but you know why that was? Because I was the only interesting character with decent lore. Killing off that one character is single-handedly the worst decision made ever since the erased ending. Heavenly Delusions pisses me off. Not because it was a bad show, no, it was even a good show. Interesting plot and characters and a unique two-perspective storytelling. It had good visuals and animation and the dialogue was interactive and fun. <laughs> But then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I hate shows where they just sexually assault women for no reason. It was such a bad plot point and such a bad way to end a good anime. I'm getting pissed just thinking about it. Skip it up and down. Psalm 100 was really good. A surprising show that came out of nowhere with its amazing first episode and its composition. Chainsaw Man came out swinging. 
Literally, and actually hit. When a show has this much hype, I'm just ready to be disappointed. Like, I was strapped in to be waterboarded with One Punch Man Season 2, but it was a pleasant surprise. All the intense personalities of the characters came through very clearly, and the pure sexual tension of a certain redhead woman was very much present. Just like my raging boner. Let's not compare it to these other shows. It's Boshi the Rock, I'm gonna spoil it for you. Boshi the Rock was it. The missing puzzle piece, the first bite of a burrito, the peak of last year's anime, an actual semi-realistic depiction of social anxiety but cranked up by 200% in the visual department. No deep motives, no high stakes. Well, for her, everything is high stakes. Just a girl trying her best and sometimes that's enough. <laughs> I haven't watched 3 out of 6 of these, I know, I know, I'm the anime boy, I should have watched everything, but I have good reasons. I'm not caught up with Black Clover to any extent, so I had no reason to watch this movie, I totally just missed this one, and to be honest, I don't even know where to watch Slam Dunk. But these 3 I did watch. Blue Giant was unexpected. The story revolves around this former basketballer who wants to become the greatest saxophone player in the world. So basically chasing two careers that will flop after high school. He picks up some people on the way and forms this Yas trio, which they call Yas. Yes, Yas. With two S. The movie tackles the ups and downs of chasing a dream in a very lonely field. Practicing, performing, losing and then getting back up again to do it over and over until you finally make it. From the same director who did the likes of Mob Psycho, it's also a very visually stunning movie. Damn, I wanna watch this again. Love is War was really just an extension of last season. As a movie, it did nothing for me. Just more running around in the same fucking circle. At least in the last season, we got the whole confession and kiss, but this shit felt like we just disregarded all that, threw it in the trash and spat on it. People be clowning Rent a Girlfriend, including me, for being a slow show with no progression, but the same people go and call this a cinematic masterpiece. It just feels so long at this point, man. Just give it up. Susume was Shinkai's latest movie, and to me, one of his best works. It might be some recency bias, but I really did think that going in a more supernatural direction with the world building Shinkai has was a really good idea. We all know that none of his movies really have a clear storyline or a coherent story, and this movie was definitely messy in its places too, but it still felt like one of his most compelling stories to date. The move by making my man into a half-completed share actually worked out, which is a crazy thing to say. Well, we got this, so I can't really be surprised. The music was amazing as usual, and personally, I think this is the best main theme. Akiba Maid War is your usual shock factor anime. Oh look, it's maids, the thing that is supposed to be calm, cute and collected, but wait. They are all shooting each other, oh my god, what the fuck? I'm at the point where I've seen so many variations of this show, where we try to flip a trope on its head and make something quirky, but these characters, without Ranko, she's my wife. As long as they're motivated, I'm super motivated. Are so badly written, man, like what are we doing here, come on. Do It Yourself is a charming little show. Your average slice of life anime with cute anime girls building things. The art style is unique and very artsy, which fits the whole vibe very well. The characters look like they aren't completely done yet either, like they ran off the reference sheet and started doing it themselves kind of deal. Not much to say, it's cute. And speaking about cute, Buddy Daddy's or Gay Spy Family was an adorable show. It follows these two assassins who are your typical total opposites who somehow ended up together. And here is this four-year-old child who comes in and declares this man her father and now they have a kid. Throughout the 12 episodes, we get to follow these two, first struggling, but slowly growing more and more fond of her until she's an irreplaceable part of their family. And for people who actually think this is just a spy family clone, it's not. Anya is supposed to be the same age as this girl, but the difference is that Miri actually acts like a 4 year old. Sorry Anya, you're good in your ways, but you act like a full grown adult at times, so pipe down. Let's remove the bullshit and only talk about the two viable options. Let's remove the bullshit and only talk about the one viable option. Yu Yu Tsukaisen was so much better animation wise than anything that has dropped this year and it's not even close. This level of animation should not be the benchmark for anime moving forwards because of the conditions that this was made under. But the animators who's currently at gunpoint at MAPPA produced two of the best fights in anime history back to back with Sukuna vs Yogoat and Sukuna vs Maoraga. The cinematic beauty that was this to fight will be talked about forever. Just watching the pure destructive power of Sukuna made me hard beyond Sky Summers, and I can't believe that this is even a question. 
This character design really comes down to Chainsaw Man and Hell's Paradise. Yes, yes, Toji, Toji, and Toji, but he can't carry a whole series, okay? Chainsaw Man have come up with some of the most recognizable female characters in recent times, which is a super difficult thing to do. Like, I would argue that Makima has more drawing power than Nami or Fubuki, two characters that has been in the industry forever. Makima's simple yet extremely hot design just became iconic overnight. Other than her, power kinda became the benchmark for demon fiends. She followed a bit of that Zero 2 hype, but just did it better. Even if she might smell like a public restroom, I alone will indulge. Hell's Paradise solved character design. Every single one of them has a unique design that complements their story and personality to a T. A good design is where you can look at a character and without knowing anything about said character, you can still figure out what kind of guy they are. Just look at some examples. Gabimaru, Emo Ninja, Sagedi, Calm and Collected Pushover, This Man, Muscle Head with only raw strength. You see? You can easily piece together what kind of person they are based on their appearance. Something you should not do in real life. I'm just gonna go straight on target here and say Keichiro Saito with Boshi the Rock. I have sucked off Boshi already. Nah, Paul. I've already been on Boshi's stick. Nah, what? Having previously expressed lavish commendations for Boshi the Rock, I find it odious to forego an extensive elucidation on the subject. The direction of the show is the sole foundation of the great result we got. No fucking shit. Haha, <laughs> fuck you, you got noise gated. Everything from Boshi's internal battles portrayed to the live performances makes everything feel so alive. Keichiro Saito has worked on shows like Mob Psycho, Free Run, Tucked Up, and so much more. A super talented key animator as well as director. Okay, I know I sound like a massive dick rider, especially for someone who has gone out and called season 1 mid before, but how can I not? Yu Yu Tsukaisen season 2 had some of the best cinematography, period. Not only this year. We can have an argument with Vinland Saga, but it still doesn't match up to the quality we got from JJK. I'm sorry, man. The best art direction has to go to Zone 100's amazing choices of playing with colors and contrast. Yes, I would have picked JJK again, but even I started to get secondhand embarrassment. Even if the anime had a worse upload schedule than me, they took their time to make sure that everything was like they wanted to before releasing it. Creating the contrast where the work nature was worse than a zombie apocalypse and how Akira was happy that the world was crumbling right before his eyes was straight up fun. But fucker broke through the aspect ratio for the sake of freedom. He was on a mission and so was Bug Films with these seamless transitions, even if it took a while. Denji over Yuji is crazy, but other than that, the other candidates are very predictable. We have our Eren Jaegers, our Monkey D. Luffy's and so on, but the real star this year was, and I think you already know... BULLSHIT! Fuck out of here with that bullshit, it's Torfin. My fucker did not suffer all that for this skanky Asian boy to pick an introverted pink-haired anime girl. The torch has been passed over from Anya to Miri, because I think Anya can protect herself pretty fucking good at this point. Okay, come on, it has to be idol. Tensai Tekna Idol Sama. You're my savior, you're my savior. The impact idol had on the internet was almost bigger than the anime itself. Everyone was playing this shit. Real life idols were doing the dance. Like the pure impact this had on the music community, not only the anime community, must be studied. Don't even play with me, go and watch this movie and tell me that you also weren't levitating off your chair. This is the only thing I can appreciate from this show. The opening is an absolute banger and the visuals are so stunning. Too bad they had to go and ruin everything. Now I just become an Oshino Kodik writer, what the fuck? Nah, but Mephisto goes so hard for no reason. It's probably one of my top 10 endings ever, and it's almost a shame that it got wasted on an ending and not an opening. Okay, it's time for the speedrun categories. Best Romance, Tomoshan. Best Comedy, Boshi the Rock. Best Action, Yusu Kaisen Season 2. Best Fantasy, Mushoku Tensei Season 2. Best Drama, Vinland Saga Season 2. Best Slice of Life, Skip and Loafer. There is literally nothing that can beat his performance. Yes, she did a scream without any editing. Look at this, she does it here again. I haven't watched any of these. And the anime of the year goes to... 
You used to carry some. Uh, 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 why is not? Ah, uh, uh, fuck, it's good. I mean, what? Uh, 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 fuck, stop. Hello, guys. Sonny sadly couldn't do a voiceover as he is not in a condition to speak, walk, or breathe right now. We appreciate your cooperation and we hope you enjoyed the video.